little bit by the motion, um, but it was the, the exact same play that we did a year ago against them. Um, and the second play was actually a run with a pass option. And uh, not that anybody would realize it, but the wide receiver that was going to get the ball thrown to him, unfortunately, was blocking for the run. So Will just threw it away. And then the third one obviously put us in a third and 10, and, and obviously we were going to throw it there. Um, so we, we should have really went play action, shot play, uh, run, or free hitch. And then, and then obviously the third down dictated what we called there. Okay, and uh, Oklahoma State seems to be one of the most improved defensive teams in the, the conference this year. What, what is it that stands out about them right now? Well, I think the reason that the, they, they – I don't know that where they exactly were a year ago, but the reason they're so good right now is their back three, quote, I'd call the safeties, the, well, the, the nickel outside linebacker and then the two safeties. Man, they, they really run the defense and do a great job and make up for a lot of things that maybe the front end doesn't get done sometimes. And uh, do, do you expect Briley to be able to play this weekend right now? Uh, you know, it'll be, it'll be more game day decision, but uh, it'll, be, it'll be something we'll have to deal with when it gets here, but don't really know at this time. All right. Thanks, Courtney. Appreciate it. Are we going to let him off this easy? Anybody else have a question? Hey, Ryan Black, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Courtney, I, I was wondering because I know uh, when we got, when we got to talk to, to Coach Kleiman the other day, he, he said that he had he didn't sit in on the meeting with with Will and and Coach Klein when they kind of went over the West Virginia tape. So how did he end up grading out? Uh, obviously, anytime you have turnovers, uh, you're not going to grade out nearly as high as you'd like. Um, you know, I felt like on intermediate and short passing game, he really graded out well, made good choices, threw it well. Um, he didn't drive the ball down the field very well, to be honest with you. And, and that's something that um, I think he'll continue to get better at. Um, we had one ball that he threw down the, deep down the field that got intercepted. That one, I thought the DB made a great play. Um, but I think he would tell you that if he throws that ball that uh, is more of a line drive, put it on the wide out, uh, it's not it's not even put in that situation. Um, and the best part about him is is he continually is learning. Um, yeah, anybody's going to get rattled a little bit when you get beat like we did. Um, but it, but he understands wholeheartedly that it's a team effort, and, and uh, he's our guy right now, and 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 we're, we feel good about him. And then you know after the loss, uh, you know Coach Kleiman said that he thought maybe catching that touchdown would would be a boost for for Malik for the rest of the year. Did you maybe? Notice so far this week in practice, he had a little more pep in his step. Um, you know, I don't know really in practice, but I think just as an overall, um, I think it can be, it can uh, uh, create some confidence for him, and we need him. I mean, we, you know, I think all of us would would say that if if the young man can get healthy and really go three, four, five, six weeks in a row playing fast and, and feeling good about himself, he can be a really good player. And then last thing for me is, is obviously Briley gets so much of the attention because he's the one catching passes and catching touchdowns. But how do you break down the rest of your group, how they played between Sammy, Jax, Mason, et cetera? Yeah, well, you know, I, I really look at them a, really, a little bit in two, two, two categories. Obviously, uh, Leonard's and Sammy are much taller, longer uh, athletic guys. Um, Sammy, obviously the most athletic of them, of the two. And then Jackson and Barta, you know, Mason does a good job just being that, you know, that lunch pail type of guy that's going to come to work and does everything that he can do to help us be successful. Um, Jackson's got a little bit more quick twitch, a little bit more um, just a fluid, even though he's, he doesn't maybe look like it, a fluid athlete, a guy that catches the ball naturally. Um, and, you know, at some point we do need to keep getting Jax even, even into the run game as far as handing it to him and, uh, we've had some plays in for him, but we just haven't had the opportunity to give it to him, and we need to give him a little bit of a, uh, you know, throw him a, a bone a little bit and, and let him carry it because he can do something with it, I believe. Michael. Yeah, Courtney, you mentioned having uh, packages for a number of the different uh, running backs. In what ways are those uh, enhance those packages and in ways that can impact the offense? Well, the, the biggest thing we got to do is, is we got to execute what we are calling so that we can get more plays and get more uh, opportunity to not be in a third down situation. 
Um, you know, I don't know the exact number of third downs we had this past year uh, week, but but too many that were uh, uh, in a position where now you're not able to say, okay, let's put Tyler in for a specific run player. Let's put um, Harry in for a specific. Uh, you know, we got to do a better job of being able to execute what we're doing so we can use everybody's tools. In what ways have you seen Sammy Wheeler evolve as tight end? Well, you know, crazy enough, Sammy, I believe, has always been able to run and, and catch the football and do some things, but he's getting better as a blocker. He's, he's becoming, uh, he's, uh, you know, it wasn't in his natural position, and he's starting to really understand, you know, how to how to keep your hands tight, how to shoot your hands, how to, uh, have a great base when you make contact and, and, and drive block people. And he's becoming more of a, that he can be in there from a run game standpoint as well as a passing game standpoint. Ryan. Hey, hey Courtney, I want to jump back in one last time. Uh, I, I was just curious with knowing the capabilities that Oklahoma State's offense has, uh, has the goal line kind of scoring, is that more of an emphasis this week, considering you know, that, that first drive where you guys had the first and goal, the two? Is like basically just knowing that, hey, guys, we've got to punch in the end zone. We can't settle for field goal. Saturday. Yeah, you know, the, the crazy part is that was a huge emphasis last week because uh, a year ago I really felt like the reason we weren't successful against West Virginia was because they forced us to kick two field goals in the red zone. Um, you know, this past week against them, uh, first play, obviously, we, which we try to run a little quarterback option and, and doesn't work. And the second play, I honestly believe Jack's caught the football, um, rolled over, and, and I thought their DB did a great job punching it out when he was sitting on the ground. Um, obviously, they didn't. It's not a touchdown uh, because he didn't finish the play. Um, but uh, scoring touchdowns in the red zone has to be a high premium. Uh, and, and thank goodness we've done a nice job for the most part. Um, but we've got to continue to be better when you play against really, really good defenses, and that's what they have.